আরবি মূল শব্দ সালম বা সালমন থেকে যার অর্থ শান্তি এটা মূল শব্দ সিলম থেকেও এসেছে যার অর্থ নিজের ইচ্ছাকে আল্লাহর কাছে সমর্পণ করা মানুষ ভয় পায় একদিন হয়তো আরবদের হাতে নিউক্লিয়ার বোম চলে আসতে পারে তারা বুঝতে পারে না ইসলামিক বোম শান্তির বোম অনেক আগেই পড়ে গেছে এটা পড়েছে যেদিন নবী মোহাম্মদ সাল্লাম জন্মগ্রহণ করেন Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and welcome to another episode of Witness with Wahid. I have with me again somebody whom, as I said in the first episode this season, somebody who needs no introduction to you. And that is my brother, honorable scholar. I will call you that, sir, Dr. Zakir Naik, uh, somebody who's been educated in this country via Peace TV for a very, very long time. Um, I have a question for you, a very focused question to start this program with. We have only 20 minutes. Let's see what we can get into this. Um, how much is personal appearance important in Islam? And my first question would be, is there an appearance code in Islam which is common to both men and women? An appearance code. Rabbi Shari Sadri, Vassil Yamri, Wahlul Urdut Milesani Afka Kauli. As far as his appearance, important in Islam is the first part of the question. Yes, it is mainly the act, submitting your will to Allah. Muslim means a person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The act is more important, but that does not mean that appearance is totally to be neglected. If we follow what the commandment has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely you'll get some up for that. As far as, for example, for a Muslim, a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, in the Book of Dress, volume number 7, hadith number 7, 80 and 81. A beloved Prophet said, do the opposite of what the pagans do. Grow your beard and trim your mustaches. So that's the commandment of the Prophet. So this is a good label for the Muslims of beard. That's a good identity. Secondly, the Prophet always, whenever he went out, he always covered his head. So that's a second label. But the beard is a more important label as compared to the covering the head. So that's, a, that's an identity thing, isn't it? That's but no, my question was, is there a common, common, sort of code, set, a common code for code men and women men and combined? Women. As far as the label for men and women differs. I see. Okay. There is no common code on identity. There are other common aspects. This what I told you was about for the man. For the woman, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not a beauty except what appears ordinary of, and draw her veil over her bosoms, except in yes. front of her husband, father, her son, and a big list of men is given. So for the woman, basically, in the dress code, there are six criteria. Only okay. the first criteria differs. Okay. For the man, the extent is from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hand up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria are the same for the men and the woman. The second is, the clothes they wear, it should not be so tight so that it reveals the figure. The clothes should be loose. The third is, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. The fourth is, it should not be transparent or translucent so that you can see through it. Five is, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the unbelievers. So these are the six criteria for hijab mentioned in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Only the first one differs. That is the extent. I see. And for the label for the woman is the hijab she wears. 
that a complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen is the face so and therefore, the chest. Therefore, let's do a man's one. Sorry? The ideal, a, a man's. Now, let, let's look at sex-specific dress codes. Mm. Ideally, what should a Muslim man look like when he is dressed according to Islam? As I told you earlier, the six criteria. Whatever clothes we wear, if it doesn't go against these six criteria, it's perfectly acceptable. Anything. We can follow any culture of any country, any society, as long as it doesn't go against the six codes. For example, I'm wearing a suit. There is no verse in the Quran saying wear a suit. There's no hadith saying that. Neither is there say don't wear. So it's muba optional. But my trousers are loose. My navel to knee is covered. It is not transparent. It is not resembling opposite sex. It does not resemble any other religion. People of misconception tie as a sign of Christianity. It is not. Yes. It is not. But if I say I want to follow the Western culture of wearing shorts, now that Western culture of wearing short goes against the criteria of navel to the knee being covered. So I cannot wear a short, but I can wear a suit. So basically, there is no one particular type as long as it doesn't go against these six criteria. So if you go in India, different dress code, no problem. Whether in Maldives, whether in Europe, whether in America, it should follow the six criteria that's important for a Muslim. As a label which I spoke earlier, as a label, the Prophet advised that you wear a beard, not that if you don't keep a beard, you will not be a Muslim, that you can't go to Jannah. Keeping a beard is important, but it doesn't come in the 70 major sins. I see. It's important. It's important, but for example, practicing Islam, offering salah is more important, giving zakat is important, believing in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not doing shirk is the most important. Then about salah, then zakat, Ramzan. Now if you analyze, if a person keeps a beard and does not believe in tawhid, does not offer salah, what's the use? <laughs> so the marks that you get for tawhid and for salah and for zakat are much more as compared to the beard. But if a person wants to score very high marks, like if I want to enter a medical college, I will even go for this half mark and one mark. So it's so a good percentage. So this, though it carries less mark, even follow these minute details, the chances are that you will get higher grades. But only this will not take you to Jannah. It's all put together. I see. Then how precisely does the Quran specify a woman's dress code? As I told you, I gave you a verse of the Quran. Yes, that is... Lord, chapter 24, verse 31. That yes. said to the believing woman, she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and spin out her beauty except what appears ordinary of. The second verse is of Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse 59, which says that, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women, when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, they should put on the overcoat. The Arabic word is jilbab. So that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. So when I spoke about the six criteria, these two verses, along with the other hadith, give you the six criteria. That the complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hand of the rest. And loose clothes. And loose clothes should not be transparent. No. Idea. And if the adult, they wear a jilbab and overcoat. Ah. So that, that fulfills all the criteria. When, the moment you wear overcoat, it fulfills the criteria of being loose, without the figure being seen, and it should not be translucent. Um, how about jilbab with lots of flashy sequins and... As it, one of the criteria, it should not be so glamorous so that it attacks the opposite sex. Now, when you have sequins and flashing, the whole thing is defeated, the purpose is defeated. So if you have something very flashy, fine, it can be well made. It's not compulsory, it should be black. Some people have misconception that the burqa or the hijab should be black. Fine, if you well, wear what black... Is that? What does that come from, you think? No, it's come from the culture. See, for example, if a person wears black, Maybe you may have to wash it once in a week. If you wear white, you may have to wash it every day. So choice is yours. You can wear white, you can wear any other color, but it should not be glamorous. I see. So any color is permissible, but wearing black gets dirty less. So you can wash it less, so that choice is yours. So this is a misconception that a Muslim woman should only wear black. This is wrong. But she should wear an overcoat so that it is loose and the figure is not seen. It's not I see. Transparent. Therefore, a, f a fully covered woman with a very tight but black dress. It's wrong. That's Very wrong. tight is wrong. But somebody in a, in a loose, but again, full covering, in, in brilliant purple, should be all right. Of course. But if it's tight fitting, it goes against one of the criteria of hijab. The figure should not be revealed. I see. Oh,
पवित्र बी आल्ला कलम चैलेंज कर मत पृथ्वी ग्रंथ नहीं जमुमिन जीवन के आलोकित कर दे देख विशुद्ध प्रत्यादेश पवित्र कुरान कल रत साढ़े दस टाय पुनः सम्प्रचार सकाल नटाय बांगलेशे पीस टी बांगल् परिचर्या छाड़ा को जिन तरह सौंदर्यता टीका रखते परे ना ठीक तेम ही ईमान और आमल परिचर्या छाड़ा एक जन ममिन लक्ष्य उद्देश्य बुझते पर आसन रसुल सल्लाह आलिस्लम रेखे जावा बाणी श्रवणर मध्यमे निजे ईमान तजा कर रियादुसलहर दर्शे हमारे थकून देख रियाजुसलेह कल सन्दा छटायन सम्प्रचार दुपुर बारोटाय बांगलेशे पीस टी बांगल् जीवन रंग धनु के कखो की विश्लेषण कर देखे जीवन उत्थान पतन चढ़ाई उतरई आनंद बेदना क्षोभ हताशा सम्पर्क विस्तारित चेष्टा कर देख जीवन रंग धनु केवलम्र पीस टी बांगल् कत कार्यकरी भाव मोमिन बंदा निजे क्ज के इसलमी रंगे रंजित कर जीवन रंग धनु प्रति मंगलवार रत दस टाय पुनः सम्प्रचार सकाल साढ़े आठ टाय बांगलेशे पीस टी बांगल् इसलमी अर्थनीति कत सुंदर भाव नूतन जुगे सफलता अर्जन करी अर्थनीति परवर्ती अनुष्ठान पीस टी बांगल् And, and and a lot i i believe has to do with how you carry yourself as of well of course see, this is only the dress code not the complete hijab this is the hijab of the dress then the hijab where a person walks the way a person talks the way a person thinks all hijab of the eyes is there lowering the gaze what he thinks in the heart how does a person talk how does seriously he walk? brother did you say hijab of the eyes hijab of the thought everything is there 
This can is you, you, of the press code only. Can you tell me a little bit about this? This is very interesting See, to for me. For example, the first part of the verse I quoted, Surah Noor, chapter 24, verse 31, said to the bling woman, she should lower her gaze. That yes. Means when a woman, but before that, before this verse, it speaks about for the man. Normally, scholars speak about hijab for the woman, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first speaks about hijab for the man and then for the woman. Allah says in the verse earlier, in Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Moment a man looks at a woman, and if any unashamed thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. That is the hijab for the man. Then comes the hijab for the woman. That means she should lower her gaze. So when you look at a girl and but natural, and if any unashamed thought comes, you should lower your gaze. No one can say that he looks at a girl, nothing happens to him. If a man says he looks at a girl, beautiful girl, nothing happens to him, he requires a psychiatrist. Okay. <laughs> right? So the Quran says you lower your gaze. So that is hijab of the eyes. Hijab of a thought. When you look at a girl and you think something wrong about her, you start thinking obscene things, that's hijab of the thought. Hijab of the heart. So all this put together is a complete hijab. There may be a lady who may be following all the dress code, completely covered, loose clothes, not tight fitting, everything. But if her behavior is not good, you know? Otherwise, you know, she's talking to the men without any hijab and very free and shaking and then dancing, etc. So she's following the dress code of the clothes, but not of the act, of the behavior. So you, everything put together. Which is, which is more important? All are important. Oh. But, but natural behavior is more important. But you say only behavior, if a person, okay, I'm being very modest, but I'm going to wear a mini. The moment you wear modest and wear mini, then you're inviting trouble. <laughs> so it is all put together as a package. This, this is something that I think a lot of us can learn from. And especially, um, you put it in such nice words, that there is hijab for the man. First for the man, then for the woman. It's always first for the man and then for the woman. Allah says, for the man first. People talk about hijab for the woman. Allah says that when a man looks at a woman, he should lower his gaze. I've also heard, I mean, I had to talk with uh, some of my friends when I came over here, and some of them have, have different ways of thinking as well. And somebody told me, what right does one man have over the other man on telling him how to dress? How would you address that question? What man has a right to tell the other man how to dress, or what right does the woman have to tell the other woman yes. what to dress? So what you realize that right is different, fine? But normally when you ask any man, you ask him a simple question. If there are two twin sisters who are equally beautiful, very beautiful, who are walking down the streets of Mali, one is dressed up in their Sama hijab, complete body covered, the only part seen is the face and hand of the wrist, and the other twin sisters even in the western clothes of mini, mini skirts, or she's wearing shorts or low neck. And if both of them are walking down the streets of Mali, and down the corner there's a hooligan who's waiting for a catch, who's ready to tease a girl. I'm asking the question, which girl will tease? The girl wearing the miniskirts, <laughs> the girl wearing the Islamic <laughs> hijab? Answer is obvious, isn't it? Obvious, the one wearing the miniskirts. Then you ask that man, that what if someone teases your sister? If someone teases your mother, oh, I will break his neck. When someone teases your mother, you want to break his neck. When someone teases somebody else's mother, you say it is normal. So there's a saying in Hindi, Tali do har se it happens okay. with two forces. So the two forces, one, how the girl is dressed up, and how the man also. So both are to blame, equally blame. We have, we have the same saying in our language, except it, there's a slight twist to it. It says, one hand cannot clap. Correct, one hand cannot clap. That's right. So the thing is that the both are responsible, even the girl who's not properly dressed up is responsible, and the man staring is responsible, both are responsible. So wearing is important for the society. If that is the case, imagine, there are many people who say, what right do you have to say how a person dressed up? You cannot let the society go on the wrong track. Imagine if there are people walking without clothes on the street. You might have riots on your hands. There'll be problems. So you can't say that, you know, where's the limit? See, some people say, there you should not interfere. So if you go there, everyone has a limit. For this, is, this, is, this, is what, this is where I'm coming from. People say this. What, how can you interfere in somebody else's life? Correct. So the thing, the limit is, for example, in certain countries, in certain countries, even looking at a woman is supposed to be immodest. If you go to Islamic countries, where I have Islamic following. In other countries, you come to India, looking at a woman is immodest. Touching a woman is immodest. 
You go to other Western country, looking is not immodest, touching is not immodest, you can shake hand. But you cannot go beyond that. In other Western countries, you can do anything with the man and woman as long as it is with permission. Where do you draw the limit? So what you realize that same way some people tell me, I tell them that what is the limit, it keeps on changing, depending upon society. I see. But the best description can be given by Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason not only in the Quran, even if you read the Bible, the Bible specifies the same thing in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5. In 1 Timothy, chapter number 2, verse number 9, that the woman should be dressed up with shamefacedness, with sobriety, and they should not have braided hair of gold and pearls. It's mentioned in the 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 5 and 6, that the woman that does not cover her head, her head should be shaved off. So Bible is more strict even than the Quran. Same thing in the Vedas. In the Vedas also it says the woman should cover her head. So what we fail to realize that our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has created us, knows what is the best. He is the Creator. He knows what is the best, which will be best for us, how to lead a life which is of peace. And there you have the exact stamp That's right. for, for that particular answer. And plus, logically also you can prove this. Please, elucidate. Logically, so logically I have asked you the question, which girl will it is? And you said, but obvious, the girl wearing the Western clothes. That means the girl wearing the Western clothes is inviting trouble. She's inviting. So what we would say, that she's a cause and the person staring is a cause. Both are equally responsible. But how about if you have somebody who is very, very modestly dressed, mm -hmm. who passes a comment on someone else, mm -hmm. hey, that person's dress is not according to what I believe is right. Mm -hmm. Is that permissible? It is permissible. What is the intention is important. If the intention of the person is to get the other human being on the straight path, it is permissible, but it should be done with hikmah. As you earlier quoted the verse of the Quran of Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125. hasna, wajadun ahsan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. And argue with them in the ways that are best most gracious. You should not insult. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you there? It's Allah. Do the hikmah with love and affection. As the Quran says, you win over your enemies rather than defeat them. Brother, in the previous episode, you mentioned uh, the, the concept of, of having faith. And here you're coming up with, with another very firm statement here. Do it with love. Of course, love, hikmah, and, and wisdom. With wisdom. The main purpose should not be to insult the person. Our main purpose is to get him on the straight path. As Allah says in Surah Al Imran, chapter 310, We Muslims are the best of people evolved for mankind because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. Therefore, your message here is when it comes to dress codes for Muslims, all the signs are there, all the indications are there, the directions are there, That's right. right in the book. That's Go right. there, take a look at it. That's but if you want to correct your brother or sister, don't insult. Correct. Do it with wisdom. That's right. Do it with kindness. That's right. Do it with love. What a beautiful message, my brother. Thank you so much. I enjoyed that, and I'm sure our audience did as well. Just to add one point. Yes. Normally people, when they try and put beard is important or salah is important, of course the action is important, but they cannot belittle the dress code. The dress code is important. As I said, it may not come in the major sense. But if a person wants to go to Jannah and wants to collect even those half marks out of 100, one mark out of 100, this altogether such things will add up. So even the hijab is important, even the beard is important. It may not be as important as salah, fine? But a person doing both together of a salah, gives zakat, is charitable, is honest, and keeps the dress code, then he'll go on a high level, inshallah. Thank you so much for that beautiful message of love, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for this evening. And thank you so much for, for having both of us in your sitting rooms this evening. May God bless you. And may you have a beautiful evening ahead of you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
সরকার আপনার সম্পদকে সুরক্ষিত না রাখতে পারে বিনিয়োগ আপনার সম্পদকে না বৃদ্ধি করতে পারে কিন্তু জাকাত দিলে নিশ্চয়ই আপনার সম্পদ বাড়বে থাকবে সুরক্ষিত এবং পবিত্র পিস টিভির সাথে থাকুন আপনার জাকাত দানের অর্থ পাঠাতে পারেন আই আর এফ আই আলট্রায়ন ব্যাংক কোয়াড্রান কোর্ট আটচল্লিশ গ্যালথর্পে রোড বর্মিংহাম ইউকে পাউন্ড অ্যাকাউন্ট নাম্বার শূন্য এক এক তিন দুই তিন শূন্য এক আই ব্যান জি বি বান্ন এল ও ওয়াই ডি তিন শূন্য নয় ছয় তিন চার শূন্য এক শূন্য দুই চার এক নয় দুই শর্ট কোড তিন শূন্য 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 আট তিন সোয়েফ বি আই সি কোড আই বি ও বি জি বি বাইশ টাকা পাঠিয়ে আমাদের ইমেল করুন অ্যাডমিন অ্যাট দ্য রেট পিস টিভি ডট টিভি পিস টিভি মানবতার সমাধান যাদের পথে চলা যায় না তারা কারা প্রতিরাকা চলাতে তো তাদের কথাই পড়ছি তবে কি ইচ্ছে করে অথবা জ্ঞানের ভুলে আমরা অনেকে ছুটে চলেছি সেই অভিশপ্ত এবং ভ্রান্তদের পথে জানতে দেখুন ইস্টিবি বাংলায় আমাদের আয়োজন যাদের পথে চলা যায় না জানেন কেন ইসলাম মন্দপথকে নির্বাচন না করার নির্দেশ দিয়েছে যাদের পথে চলা যায় না আজ রাত দশটায় আপন সম্প্রচার সকাল সাড়ে আটটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় নিশ্চয়ই যে আল্লাহর সাথে শিরকি লিপ্ত হয় আল্লাহ তার জন্য জান্নাতকে হারাম করে দেন এবং জাহান নাম অবধারিত করে দেন শহীদুল্লাহ খান মাদানি জান্নাতে যাওয়ার এবং জাহান নাম হতে বাঁচার একটি মাত্র পথ তাওহিদ আল্লাহ সুবহানাহু ওয়া তাআলার তাওহিদ জানার জন্য দেখুন আমার ধারাবাহিক দার্স কিতাবুত তাওহিদ দেখুন কিতাবুত তাওহিদ আজ রাত এগারোটায় বা পুনঃ সম্প্রচার সকাল দশটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় যদি আল কোরআন থেকে যারা হেদায়ত পেয়েছে তাদেরকে আদর্শ হিসেবে গ্রহণ করেন আসুন আল কোরআন থেকে হেদায়ত লাভ করার জন্য দেখুন আমার অনুষ্ঠান ইসলামের বুনিয়াদি শিক্ষা শুধুমাত্র পিস টিভি বাংলায় জানুন সেই মৌলিক নীতিমালা যার মাধ্যমে দিনি বিধান বোঝা সহজ হয়ে যায় ইসলামের বুনিয়াদি শিক্ষা ও তারও সাধারণ উদাহরণ প্রতি বুধবার রাত দশটায় ভাব পুনঃ সম্প্রচার সকাল সাড়ে আটটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় 